Team Wild have been all over the globe in the last two years and have called in a wide range of game, both successfully and unsuccessfully. Calling game is a tricky thing to master and each species have their own quirks. Game calling is a massive industry as we found out at the National Wild Turkey Federation show in Nashville last year. Turkey calling is huge in the States and those boys love their calls. We even had a chance to get some tips and lessons from the pros. But it isn't easy. In Europe, there's a variety of deer that will respond to calls, especially during the rut. When myself and Steve went to Hungary after a row box, Steve's guide called in a young buck to less than five yards away. However, when Steve was back in the UK and tried his own course while we were out seeker stalking, it wasn't quite the same. But Wildy did manage to bag himself a buck and claimed the victory for his calling abilities. We use an electronic call sometimes to wail away into the night to bring in foxes with some good success. We also use hand squeaks to pull foxes in. Then, some of our friends have their own tactics. Surely I'd do a better call than now for call these foxes in. Just go, here foxy, foxy, foxy. Come on foxy, foxy, foxy. <laughs> the one thing that we've definitely learned when it comes to calling game is that it isn't easy. Luckily for us, we know some of the best in the business and they show us how it's done. Legendary deer stalker Keith Watson has been perfecting his craft since time began and prides himself on his ability to bring in muntjac and other deer. Service UK head honcho Owen Beardsmore has called and taken more deer in the UK than you can shake a stick at. Today we're in the beautiful Chilterns with these pair and both are trying to call in muntjac. It's cold time in these woods and Owen has a quota that he needs to reach. They aren't looking for the biggest bucks but both are trying to call in something for the colchies and the dining table. But who will bag their deer first? Keith is out on foot to trek the woodlands and hills of this beautiful estate. He's a firm believer that patience and timing are vital, as is being well hidden. He takes position against a tree, sets his rifle, And starts to call. He lets out a few gentle yelps like a muntjac doe to try and entice a buck or get a reaction from a fellow doe. He has no luck in this part of the woods, and so he heads on. As the sun fades and the late afternoon sky, it's the perfect time for muntjac. Muntjac are pretty active, and are usually sighted at dawn and dusk, but can be seen at all times of the day. Nice weather helps, but makes no real difference to the species. The key to calling any game animal is to be downwind, well hidden against a background familiar to the animal and to remain still.
Keith tries again in the woods. But he isn't having any luck. Calling at any time of the day can be successful, but it's dusk that offers the most dramatic results. However, tonight it's pretty quiet in these woods. Keith moves aside the sticks and branches from the front of a tree and sets up again. By moving the debris on the floor, he's given himself a more silent platform to stand on. If he goes to move off, his feet aren't going to crunch on a branch and scare away any deer. However, there isn't anything calling back. And so once again, Keith moves on. Owen is in a different part of the woods and makes his way slowly to a high seat. From here, he can sit in an elevated position against a tree and stay hidden from the deer. Owen is more of a sit and wait character and believes that if you treat your deer right, feed them and place your high seats in the best positions, you will have deer moving around you. Then, you can call them in. It's the uh, start of early evening. Um, we've just uh, come in to sneak their way into a an old beech forest and in front of us we've got a, 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 a failed plantation um, that's uh, probably the thickest area within the beech stand. Owen's hoping that when the muntjac come back through this part of the wood he can call one out of the thick stuff and into plain sight. Well, the wind's dropped and uh, it's starting to go uh, a little bit darker now. Um, I've got a good book here and uh, two good strong does. I want to try and take one of the does. So I'm going to try a couple of calls. I use a cherry wood uh, uh, turn screw call. I'm just going to do a couple of calls, see if I can coax one of them out. Unfortunately, the light fades and it's time to call it a night for Owen. It's early the next morning and Keith Watson is out before daybreak. He's hoping to get into a seat near a patch of woods that has seen a lot of deer on the game cameras. By getting out early and before the muntjac begin to move, Keith will hopefully be one step ahead of them. As day breaks and the sun rises, Keith gives out a few gentle calls. His calling has paid off and there's a beautiful big buck standing behind a tree. He's slightly on edge and begins to walk away. Keith gives him a yelp and he's very interested again. The buck has no idea where the doe is and is eagerly looking. He wants to get away, but like most red-blooded males, he can't resist the sound of a female calling. Well, as you can see there, the calls brought him in, unfortunately. Uh, it's quite a good quality book, which is not on the cards for me to shoot at the end of the day. I'm here to do the cult work. Um, so that, that'll be left for another day. The wind's quite swirly. The book was coming in with quite a passion. But once he got to the base of the tree, where the, the, the camera first picked him up, you could see he held. You can feel the wind swirling, and there is very, very little chance of being able to call him any closer. But hopefully you've seen the way the cult can work. When he went to walk away, I've peeped it and he stopped. That gives you the perfect opportunity for a shot. Um, so I hope it was all enjoyable to watch, but unfortunately, no shot because it is too high a quality. 
Keith lets out a few more peeps, and immediately to his right, he can see another muntjac. This one is a little further away, and moving behind the branches of a tree. If the muntjac stops there, he can't shoot because of the branches. He gives it a peep as it's in the clear, but it doesn't want to hang about. The muntjac is back into the thicker stuff, and is soon out of sight. One of the things that you, you, you realistically you need to keep your eye on when you're calling is the deer sometimes do come in from behind, as you've seen with we also call the muntjac doe, which unfortunately again didn't present me a shot because to my right hand side it's quite thick with branches, some close quarter and some at distance, so the deer was always obscured. Seconds later, and there's two row deer coming from behind, and they've clocked Keith. A few minutes ago, I don't think they've responded to the call, they're just actually in the area, we've got a row doe, and the kid of the year that's with her, um, and unfortunately I couldn't get a shot at the, the uh, fawn. Uh, it's directly behind me, it's very, very different, to, difficult to turn around with myself and the cameraman being in the seat. Despite Keith managing to call in two months, Jack, and spot another two row, he hasn't been able to take a shot. As is often the case with cold stalking, you can't take the first thing that comes into sight. Careful management is about taking the older and weaker deer from the herd to ensure that the gene pool stays strong. This muntjac buck will surely help ensure that there's plenty of strong genes in these woods. Owen is out on foot this afternoon as he hopes to outdo his good pal Keith and bag a deer for the cold books and the dinner table. He's taken a walk along a lane and glassed into the first field ahead of him when he spots a Munty. Part of my call on uh, looking on these field edges for Muntjac starting to come out. Um, it's a, uh, a shoot over here um, where there are a lot of pheasants and uh, throughout the winter there's a lot of food getting put out and in feeders and uh, that makes the population in Muntjac much higher because they're getting artificially fed of course. Um, I've got a beast down here I'm not quite sure what it is, it must be about four or five hundred yards away. So we're going to stalk down this edge and have a look at it uh, and see if it's something that we can get on the call sheet. Owen moves quickly behind cover and heads across the field. He creeps slowly towards the hedge to find his deer and a place to shoot from. Okay, it's a mature doe, that's just what I want, so we're going to have to try and sneak down to this hedge. Uh, it's on a bank, so it's producing a good, good safe shot for us, so it's about 120 metres. He moves slowly into a good position to find a shot. He gently gets his rifle set up. Owen gets set on the sticks and picks his spot. It's a good shot and the doe drops on the spot. Okay, that was great. That's got one in the back early. It's only just four o'clock, we've got another two hours of light. Uh, that looks like a good heavily pregnant doe, which is perfect for my goal. I'm just going to get over and see it now. Owen heads in to claim his quarry. So, uh, just to run through what we've been through, uh, we've literally been out 10 minutes and uh, across this valley, just looking along the woodland edges, um, spotted this um, muntjac doe out feeding. Um, we just checked the wind and we've snuck down an edge um, to identify it positively. And uh, it's a perfect cull animal for me. Um, big, mature, um, Munjack Doe, uh, it's about 130 metres, I've shot it off sticks, uh, it's on a nice little slope, it's just been feeding on this uh, new grass and browse that's coming through very early spring this year and um, yeah, I've aimed on the shoulder which is where I want, like to shoot my Munjack, um, being such a small animal I use a 308 calibre uh, and I like to get them on the shoulder so the bullet expands. Really when we come to um, clean and prepare it, the best parts of the meat are the haunches and the back strap. So very much the, uh, the front shoulders we hardly use because they're generally damaged by the bullets. So this is on the shoulder, that's caused my bullet to uh, expand. And then normally I've got a 10 pence size hole where the, uh, where the bullets exited. And you'll see it dropped in on the spot, so uh, instant, instant death. After two days of calling and stalking, Keith has been very unlucky. 
as the two Montjac that presented themselves were too big and in too much cover. The Montjac buck came in pretty close and was clearly mesmerised by the call. But he's a very lucky boy as he wasn't on the cars today and was allowed to carry on on his way. Owen had a call yesterday but didn't manage to bring anything in. However, being in the right place at the right time is often the key and without even needing to call, Owen has managed to bag himself a Montjac.